What's happening, guys? So, we have returned to the homeland with this guy, the new three times world's strongest man. The most successful British strongman in history, right here, which is absolutely amazing. So, we're just going to do a little recap video about world's strongest man. Obviously, it went quite well for a certain someone. Why are you dancing? It's happy, yeah. Oh, it's happy, Dad. Enjoy your life while you ha have it, eh? Cause... Tom's now a philosopher. So, um, yeah, I think it was pretty good. You want to say anything? No, it's all right. Um, did what I set out to do, did my job and came home. Um, That's all I need to say. So, we, we kind of released a couple of videos before uh, World's Strongest Man with the change up of what we did, kind of going into it, like recovery, mindset stuff. We've got a fitness video coming out. We're going to release a little bit more of that. So, that's basically how Tom becomes the third time or three times World's Strongest Man. But I think our point of view, you know, going out there, it was, it was a really kind of comfortable flight going out there. The hotel was really good. Thankfully, we actually had a comfortable flight and we all got there together for once. So, thank you, Myrtle Beach, and thank you, American Airlines. Even though my bags didn't arrive till the well, next day. Uh, but like That's in true. the last bit of the airport, I didn't like, you didn't go to New York for 23 hours and sit in an airport. Yeah. At least we got to the hotel with his least stress, which yeah. was the first time since I've been alive. But I think, first of all, I think a huge shout out to all the, the kind of the helpers, the crew, the, the cast there. They're all at World's Strongest Man. They're very professional and fantastic. The athlete, the liaisons, like, um, Gavin, Elliot, huge shout out to you guys. You know, you're absolutely amazing. Big E, I love you, Elliot. Um, Elliot was, was a huge help to us Elliot's, all. Elliot, Elliot is a goat. Um, and then all to the, the recovery, the massage team as well, Dr. Todd Dr. and Todd his and team. Big Mike boy, hey. Um, Nick, and they were fantastic. Really kind of <laughs> helped me keep my body together, which was absolutely amazing. So huge shout out to them and the, the crew, Eric, Becca, um, Lindsay, you know, it was really nice. We did a little autism chat to a few kids out there as well. So thanks for setting that up, Worlds. But yeah, with that being said, let's talk about it. So groups, first of all, I was in group one. Tommy was in group five. This is a change. Which... Usually I have to get up at fucking four in the morning and get myself prepped up. But when I got group five, I was actually lost. It took too long. I like to be like... In and out. One, and yeah, in and out. Like, group one's good when you can just go in and out, but I would have been like group two or three. But when I seen Luke's talking group one, Tom's talking group five, I was like, here we go. Are they sure they got, I, I made sure they had the names right, you know? But it was, I think it was, well, we did what we wanted, or we did what we wanted by, in terms of you winning and me getting to the final. Obviously, I wanted to do a bit better in the final, but from the group stages, it's always, I always feel a little bit of nervous, nervous energy. Group, and no, matter of a lie, I know that in the final you get the top 10, but groups are the hardest thing to get out to in World Strongest Man. Long days, there's a lot of unknown athletes as well. In my group, I had a lot of athletes that I've never seen. Half the World Strongest Man field were new, so you can't really judge them by anything. You just have to go in and basically, you can go all out, but you also have to be smart as well. So luckily I was really experienced that after the Viking press, you know, I had enough points then just to coast through, which is what I wanted to do. But yeah, for me, qualifiers so, so long, you're out from seven till like eight o'clock each day, it's drainage. I don't get myself as psyched up for them because I want to keep as much energy as I can for the finals and stuff. But yeah, I think they're the hardest ones to get out of. But thankfully we've done it again. Again, we're only two, we're the two British guys to do it, the two guys from Scotland to get to the final. So it's another big step in the right direction for us. And being brothers as well, which is pretty Oh, cool. that's the main thing, isn't it? That's the main <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah big oh, man. Oh, big <laughs> yeah. He's uh, a great an old one for us. Fuck me. We know that. You don't have to keep saying it. Just like, in case someone thinks. Like, I mean, if anyone calls me Luke Stockton on the street again, you are getting a back slap, a backhand back to where you're from. Tom's like, oh, how many World Strongest Man trophies does Luke Stockton have? Mm. None, which is unfortunate. But, um, you know, in, in the heats as well, uh, we shouted to our, our big pal, Adam Bishop, you know, you're looking fantastic. And obviously injuries and, and such forth is, is part of Strongman, unfortunately. And uh, it was horrendous to see big Adam go down because he was looking so good. And Best I've seen Adam look in a long, long time and it was nice to see him focus. But, you know, unfortunately, a car walking on that kind of surface is a recipe to disaster. To be honest, I'm not, you know, we're also doing good, but when you've got sand underfoot and... You know, if you drop that and then pick it up wrong, then unfortunately things like that can happen. So it's a fortunate thing, but he's going to come back stronger. I mean, I think Bishop and himself know he's he performed very well up to that stage and he was looking good for the finals. 
I think you know, we chat about the World Strongest Man setup. You know, the 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 seating was fantastic. You know, it was a paid. Um, event which is great, you know, so worlds can make a bit more money and make it a bit more profitable for them because obviously it's a lot of money they've got to spend to get us out there, prize money, accommodation, food, etc, etc. Um, so if they can make a little bit of money back from it, I think that's a good thing for the sport. I think it has to be profitable for worlds, for giants, for Brian, for all the shows, for it to be successful and for them to want to put it on. So um, I think that was really good. Um, they did the best of, of what they could, I think, in terms of the, the staging, um, Tom just mentioned there, you know, they set up some flooring, but it was on sand and um, that caught me off guard a little bit, I think, in, in the yoke and the, the final and then the car walk and the, um, and the heats as well. It just, I wasn't getting any, it was like a trampoline in some of the parts, but, you know, I think apart from that, it was, it was really good. I think the referee in this year was pretty good, especially in the final, I think the... Yeah, it was nice to see the referee <laughs> Being consistent, like getting made to hold the axles and getting made to get a good uh, solid down center because that's how it should be. You know, and there was none of these uh, that shouldn't be given, that should have been given, and none of this like going back and forth with the athletes. It was all straightforward refereeing, like like it should be in every year. Mm. And I think in the final, it was it, like you touched on it there. You know, a couple of they're not new athletes like Big Wes and and Tristan. You know, from Canada. Um, Very bad Mexican Andre. Oh, yeah. Andre, yeah, the the Mexican burrito. <laughs> <laughs> Tex-Mex, he, he was class, uh, but they've been about for a bit, you know, they have been competing and just great athletes and it was it was so cool to see them just come out and smash it and when you watch it back, the, the world records that were set, you know, the keg for, the max keg for height, that was, that was mad, big ways, you and Mitch, man, it was pretty cool to see that kind of battle and um, you were just a fraction off from getting it, man. It was like I was watching you from the side, and you could see it. You'd you'd hit the world record height; it would have cleared, but it was just that trajectory, wasn't it? It was, and uh, it's just one of those things. But really cool to see, and yeah, it was class to see Big Evan on the podium as well. I think after after Evan dropping the frame on his foot, geez, oh Evan, man, you're you're an absolute maniac. But uh, you got it strapped up, kind of buckled up and, and kind of got on with the show and just came out all, all guns blazing and just put in a really strong performance and you know I think we all know that Evan's you know a top athlete now he's he's fantastic and I think he's a, a really really good guy really solid person and you know it's really nice to see his him get the rewards that he deserved um, by, by getting a podium I think it was really good and, and, and also a big shout out to Mitchell Hooper second you know second place I think you know it's a uh, I think there's no word of a lie that we're going to be back and forth for a long, long time. I think it's a new rivalry. I think people have seen the rivalry. You know, it's uh, you know, to me, I just worked. I think worked hard in this final. We both, you know, worked hard as well. Unfortunately, he did that. We uh, he the first event in the final, he slipped it up. But you know, to still come second place at that is, you know, he's a phenomenal athlete and he's won up 16, 17 podiums in a row is pretty unheard of. But he's uh, pushed me to be a better athlete. He's pushed everyone behind him to be a better athlete and. Yeah, hats off for to do Mitchell Hooper fought to the end, he fought with me to the end and it was a very good contest there and we're going to have many more battles to come. I guess with that being said, I mean, talking about our performances, because that's what we're here to do, talk about the recap of, of both Tom and myself. You know, I was relatively happy with some of the events. I, um, I know I could have gone faster than the, the yoke if it was a little bit more solid, making excuses, whatever, but I just had to change my stance. I think that is what it is. My grip wasn't the best um had a few issues with attending but it is what it is getting that sorted i think the axle was class that was a really good one just missed out the 200 kilo axle press which was like so close but again really happy that my body kind of held up in, in the final it's certainly so close after europe's strongest man so you know maybe looking at it next year depending on how close europe's is to worlds might have to say no to Europe's. I don't know. We'll just see how that goes. But um, you don't need to do Europe's anymore, boy. Yeah. Now I'm the two times Europe's strongest man, uh, which is pretty cool. So what I did notice is that my body doesn't recover maybe as quick as it used to. So that's why we've spent, you know, or we've we've done the the recovery videos. But your your recovery aspect is a lot quicker because I still you're, think. I mean. Uh, obviously, Luke won Europe's strongest man two weeks before. People need to like not forget that. And also, I always think like I always have said it like this: doesn't matter how young are you in the sport, doing a competition like that, and then trying to go to the biggest show in the world five days, a five day show. Although it's two weeks, you're still your nervous system is still wrecked because yeah, it's maybe the same events and stuff and that. But like 
you know, it was a good decision for Luke to do Europe because he got his title back, he won it. But for the likes of, you know, there's a lot of other European athletes there. For example, you know, like Pavlo is a very, very good athlete. But you can, and I, Avers, but you could see those two were burnt to the crisp because yeah. of how much Europe's strongest man takes out of you. And obviously now Luke being two-time champion, I think in my eyes it's concentrate on the big show. I and mean, that's why you know, I want to win Europe's strongest man so badly. I know I can win Europe's strongest man, but World Strongest Man for me tops so much more opportunities, opens so much more doors. And it's just what I said, I always honestly doubt in that, like it's too close for me. Like I've owned 29 years old, there'll be never in a million years that I'll be able to perform as good at World Strongest Man doing a show two weeks early. Yeah, Luke's done it twice now, so he's in that kind of pedigree in the Europe Strongest Man stage. So hopefully next year we can stop him from doing Europe so we can train good and do World Strongest Man together because like you said, he's nearly 40 and it's all about peaking for that one competition. Mm -hmm. I know if he doesn't do Europe, he'll peak right for that and get top five at worst in World Strongest Man. So. Mm, not for sure. But I think, you know, looking at your performance throughout the, the final, it was probably the most consistent out of out of everyone, you know, you were, you know, yeah. first event, just did your own thing. I think that was really good. You didn't get panicky when Mitch ran off with the yoke or anything. I think, um, yeah, I think, you know, everybody knows, I think going into that event, for me, it's there were a lot of weak events. We were not weak, but like, if you can, t like last year, Conan's Wheel came last, yoke into frame. Frame's been a wee bit of an issue for myself. What, what was that? It was deadlifts. Sorry, dead. And then obviously keg toss as well. Keg toss, I'm notorious to just chucking it the wrong way and all that kind of stuff. And deadlifts as well. Those events last year and then the previous years have cost me a lot of points. So I knew going into this that I just had to focus on myself. And that's why I took everything off social media and didn't want anyone to kind of know what I was doing. Because for me, that's already, you know, with the tr learning about the mindset and stuff, that's already winning that kind of mindset battle. And then going out there into the final was right. I'm against Mitchell Hooper. I know he's the best in the world in yoke but I know he's beatable in frame. And that's all I had in my head was, if I just do this yoke without dropping it, yeah, he might be two or three seconds in front of me, but there's better frame carriers in him. And then, you know, and, you know, fortunately for myself, he dropped it and I was able to hand my grip just to the end and come top three event. And I think that top three in that event really made me confident going in through the, the whole other things. I was consistent throughout the whole day. The first day for myself as well to even, like I knew I was never going to get a world record axle, but to even you know, get a 210 in axle press and match, uh, Mitch, I've only did a 190 in competitions, so that's a 20 kilogram PB in myself. So I wanted those a PB and 210 happened to be, 20 kg PB, uh, joint first with Mitchell. Then the keg toss as well. Like I said, I've tried, Brian Shaw got the world record when I was there, and when the last World Strongest Man, was it two years ago, whatever. Mm. And I was nowhere near it because I was all over the place. I nearly went out with my third keg, I think it was a height or two, but low it. I just had to go back a bit. I knew I was most powerful. And then, you know, joint the world record, I think it was the closest to getting then that's a new world record myself, so I know what to do that now, and I, I was able to come joint first in that, and I think going into the second day, when I, it was when I was really nervous, I was went back to the hotel, and I was going through things, because Conan's in Dallas before has given me big issues, but I practiced on Conan's, I knew I was confident, and to start with the Conan's and come in top three, and that was a very, very big boost, and then to also do what I did in Dallas, and then having that big point league going into the stones. But like Luke said, I think that's my most consistent performance from qualifiers all the way to the final. I wasn't out the top three regarding car walk, but that's because I didn't need to do that. I kept myself to myself. I kept in my lane. I knew when to switch on. I knew when to switch off. I knew everything about it. And that it was a big help as well to the mindset we'd done before at the psych sports psychology. I think uh, that really got into me on the last qualifying event when we did the, the sandbag medley, the sepo chase. And after that, I felt like I could run for another 20, 30 seconds. And it really started then my breathing work and everything as the final got on, got better and bigger, better and better. And I started zoning in more. I was really, really into my own. I mean, Eddie Hall said to me, I think he said, I don't know, he said to Luke or something that he didn't want to come up to me because I looked gurney, <laughs> but that's because I was those zoned in and I've never been like that before. So I just wanted to keep in my own lane and didn't really care what anyone else did. And I think that really helped because I think a lot of people were, you know, seeing like, what's Tom going to do? Because again, you know, when, it, when I got to World Strollers, man, I had a lot of questions were asked, oh, Tom, what you done on social media or what you done here? They were asking my list because they'd never seen anything of it. So doing all that kind of stuff was just strategic stuff for helping me to get World Strollers, man. And, you know, it worked out. I was very consistent and, uh, you know, like Lucy, now we've got all the titles back in the Stoughton household. But it was good, yeah. But that was a very enjoyable World Strollers, man. It was very good for my confidence as well. I think it's easy to have it for two times in a row, but then to lose it and then to know that you have to work harder, I think it was the best thing that happened to me. Because obviously, you know, last year I didn't really think, oh, it's just Mitch Hoop, he's, he's not going to be miles above me. But he was, and then I needed to go 
go back this year and go right how can I improve and it's adding the chambers and it's adding running in and all this kind of stuff you think it's not going to make a odds until you get out to the Welsh Royals man and you're like wow this is making me feel amazing always up in my game and even still to this day even for a free time Welsh Royals man I'm going to have to keep up in my game every single year just like Lucas just like Alexi just like Mitchell Hooper is so yeah it's going to be fun next few months but uh, I'm going to let this soak in for a while and uh, take a full advantage of this so. So yeah, I think that's a good recap. I think I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, we're back in the gym today, prepping for the next shows, and we'll give you a wee update whatever we're doing there. I'll try and get into the gym today. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and let's just drop a couple of drop three spicy emojis for the three times world strongest man, the most successful British strong man that we've had. It's an amazing, proud moment for me as a big brother. So thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the TV the show. What did they do, Tom? Stay safe, smile, stay safe. And please don't ever stop ringing that little bell. Do